Hello, welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. So we have in our background uh, our usual motivating image, which uh, is essentially a rover on Mars. And uh, these uh, um, sort of vehicles are uh, driven autonomously um, because it's not usually possible uh, to have, um, you know, um, sort of humans controlling the equipment at all times, uh, you know, on these extraterrestrial locations. So we want to be able to, of course, uh, analyze and learn to develop algorithms that are going to drive systems such as these, right? Um, so until last time, what we were doing was essentially uh, discussing the notion of positive definiteness, right? So uh, this is what we were doing until last time. We were talking about positive definite functions, right? So this was one of the building blocks in um, the Lyapunov theorems, right? So we talked about what is the positive definite functions. And after that, we sort of um, wanted to look at a few easier tests for positive definiteness, right? So we saw the definition, but then it's not always uh, easy uh, to apply the definition. And so we wanted to look at some additional tests. Uh, and we looked at these, uh, you know, easier sort of uh, tests that can be applied. And we um, sort of also saw the connection between uh, positive definite matrices and positive definite functions through an example. And right? so through this example, right? And of course, we saw, you know, another example for positive definite function also, right? So we sort of go ahead in this vein of discussion and the next sort of function is uh, a radially unbounded function. So let's um, sort of start our lecture 4.2 here, right? So we are starting to talk about radially unbounded functions. So radially unbounded functions are sort of the next level of functions. As you can see, you have uh, scalar valued continuous function again. Uh, of course, this should be R. I mean, I guess we use R here too. Let me see. Yeah, we were using R here. So I guess we can continue to use R here. Although R plus would suffice in all these cases. Okay, we don't necessarily have to use R itself, but R plus is good enough, right? So non-negative reals for time is usually what we have. Right. So we are, of course, looking at a function of time and a space variable, which maps to real numbers. This has always been the, the setup for these, you know, functions that we denote as V, which are essentially uh, going to be our Lyapunov functions subsequently. Right. Uh, so uh, what do we require? We require that uh, the function be zero at zero. Right. So at zero value of state, the function has to take the zero value. So this was the same condition for positive definiteness also. The big difference happens here. We want uh, the existence of a class KR function, which this function VTX dominates. Okay. So in the case of uh, positive definiteness, uh, this was a class K function. So what's the difference between a class K and a class KR function? We have, in fact, seen uh, you know, several examples, right? So if you have a class K function, it's, it's, uh, it can be something like, I mean, you're allowed to have something like this, you know, a function which sort of grows, 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 but you know, stays bounded 
below this. So it's always increasing, but stays bounded below this. On the other hand, a class K infinity function has to be uh, something like this. I mean, it keeps growing and goes to infinity. Yeah, as t goes to infinity. So here, of course, here, you know, here you have the x and you have sort of phi x here, right? And since, of course, these functions are uh, take as arguments uh, non-negative reals, obviously you use a norm. Right? This is what we have been doing, right? So if in the, just to compare again with the definition of positive definiteness, it was the same sort of expression, phi norm of x. The only difference being that here it was a class k function, right? And now in the case of radial unboundedness, we require v to dominate a class k r function. So this naturally sort of implies that this domination has to be for all time. Right? However, notice that just like before, we do not require, uh, you know, if you think about it, we don't require the V to be a continuously increasing function, you know, like a, a class KR function is of course a always increasing function, always strictly increasing function. Right? But all we want for V is to dominate this class K function, right? And notice that again, unlike uh, the definition for positive definiteness, here this lower bounding has to happen for all X in Rn, right? In case of positive definiteness, it was sufficient if it happened for X in some ball. Therefore, we had this nice picture, right? Where beyond this ball, the v was allowed to drop below the class k function okay so essentially the idea is that it can give us local stability properties right so the idea of positive definiteness uh, being defined in this manner is that it helps us conclude local stability properties on the other hand radial unbounded is typically used to conclude global stability properties right and so we require uh, this function v to dominate this class kr function right which is this guy in this particular case here for all time and for all values of the state okay so this is much more stricter condition as you can imagine however this still does not require that my function v be increasing or anything okay? it can be oscillating like this as long as it is uh, bounded above, uh, just a second, as long as it is bounded above your uh, class kr function, you are fine. Okay, so this is sort of an example, right? This picture sort of gives you an example. The only thing is there's no crossing happening anymore, right? It always has to lie above this class kr function curve right and in such cases v is said to be radially unbounded right? and just as we uh, already stated before radial unboundedness is related to notions of global stability okay just like positive definiteness is connected to local stability radial unboundedness is connected to global stability okay what would be examples? Very simple examples. I mean, say I have x in R2 uh, and, and denote it as x1, comma x2. So Vx1, x2 um, equals to x1 square plus x2 square by 2 is in fact a radially unbounded function. Yeah, why is it radially unbounded? Because if you look at this function itself, right, this in itself is a class kr function, right? This in itself is a class kr function. Why? Because it's zero at zero, right? If you plug, if you plug zero value of the state, that is x one and x two are both zero, which is what it means for x to be zero. Right? I get a zero here. And you know this is strictly increasing and going to infinity as yes, any x goes to infinity. So in any direction, if you go to infinity, this is going to go to infinity. All right. So therefore, this is itself a class kr function. Therefore, v is in fact a radial unbounded function. Also, every class kr function 
will also be a readily unbounded function. Of course, I have, I can have, you know, uh, slightly more involved examples. Like, you know, I can take something like uh, v with t also x1 x2 as uh, t by 2 x1 square plus x2 square and here of course t is greater than or equal to 0 right uh, so here of course this is you know this is greater than uh, equal to half x1 square plus uh, let me be careful here let me say this is not t but this is t plus 1 so this is greater than or equal to half x1 squared plus x2 squared because t plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 so therefore this is greater than or equal to half x1 squared plus x2 squared so it implies v is again radially unbounded Okay, so uh, we can also have, uh, let's see, um, let me try to think. Uh, we can also have some kind of oscillating examples like the one that we showed in the picture. And that can be constructed, uh, say, by again, introducing a time variable as 1 plus say sine squared t divided by 2 x1 squared plus x2 squared right so this is again greater than or equal to half x1 squared plus x2 squared because sine squared t this is of course greater than or equal to 0 so this is this is fine and this is radially unbounded but what this term is going to do, right? This what this term is expected to do is to sort of uh, make things oscillate around a bit. Yeah, make things oscillate around a bit. So this this term is going to contribute to some oscillation, but in time, right? Here, if you notice, the oscillation was with the state itself, right? That can also be constructed, right? I am not uh, doing it here. Right, but this can that can also be constructed. Okay, so uh, I would really urge you to give it a thought as to uh, you know try to try to construct such a vx. Okay, try to construct such a Vx, right? Where it's you know x and it's oscillating with respect to x itself, but it's still dominating a class k function, right? Still dominating a class k function. It's it's not too difficult, honestly speaking. Yeah, it's not too difficult. I mean, you can think of I mean the sim simple ideas are like you know, I can add an oscillatory signal to x squared. Yeah, something simple like that. Yeah. As long as I do that, I'm also still okay. All right. Okay. So these are all examples of radial unbounded functions. Again, relatively simple examples. Okay. But uh, again, if, when things become more complicated, we do require easier conditions. Just like before, just like the case of positive definiteness, we do require easier conditions to verify radial unboundedness also. Okay. So what is it? So again, if I if I think of um, the case when v is not a function of state, and remember that when it, sorry v is not an explicit function of time, uh, and remember whenever v is only a function of state, we have been using w x as the notation. Right? Do not get confused at all. I'm using v and w almost interchangeably. It's just the purpose of the function is what is important, and the notation of the function itself. So whenever uh, v does not depend on time explicitly, I am denoting it with wx. Okay. So whenever it's just a function of the state, right? Uh, then I have three requirements. Right. First is that w zero has to be zero. W x has to be strictly positive for all non-zero states. Again, 
I'll come to the difference between the positive definiteness case soon. And finally, Wx has to go to infinity as the state goes to infinity. Okay, so this is important. It has to go to infinity in any possible direction. It has to go to infinity in any possible direction. So what is the difference? First of all, let's try to see what's the difference from the easier condition for positive definiteness. Okay, so let's keep this in mind. Yeah, and, and remember that this third condition did not even exist for positive definiteness. There was no requirement for the function to go to infinity at all. So obviously this third condition is completely distinct, right? So we are not even going to discuss it. Let's look at the first two conditions only. Yeah. If you look at the first two conditions, you require the same first condition that the function itself be zero when the state is zero. Okay. There's no difference there. This is pretty much uniform along all definitions concerning Lyapunov functions. Yeah, that the function needs to be zero at zero. Why? Because zero is where we are interested to go to, right? So think of the uh, Lyapunov functions or these V functions as some kind of energy functions, right? And we want the system to settle at the origin that is x equal to zero. Therefore, we want the energy, the so called energy or this notional energy function to also be zero or minimum value at zero at the origin right it doesn't make sense otherwise right yeah if it's not at the minimum value when it's at the origin then it could possibly go lower right and therefore we will move from the origin right? doesn't make sense since we want to stay at the origin right so all these functions invariably require that they be zero when the state is zero so this condition is identical, no difference. The second condition is where there is a small change. It is positive for all x, but in a ball, removing the origin. It only has to hold true in a ball. Okay, of course, removing the origin. But here we need it to happen for all r n. This is also because how radial unboundedness is defined. Right, that, that this domination has to happen for all R. Right? Everything has to happen for all R because we are talking global notions here. Okay, so this is the difference. So the first two conditions, I, I, if I may, I would like to call it some kind of uh, global global positive definiteness it is still positive definiteness the only thing is we have we are requiring something more stringent that this positive definiteness hold for every value of state other than the origin and not just in a ball around the origin okay so this is a little bit more stringent and beyond that we require that the function goes to infinity as the state goes to infinity so what we want to do to look at this in a sort of easier condition thing uh, is to look at a lot of counter examples, right? So, and that really helps us to understand what is not a radially unbounded function, right? So I'm going to label this counter examples, okay? And uh, one, V, V x1 x2 is equal to uh, half x1 plus x2 squared. Okay, so the question is is this uh, positive definite? Is this radially unbounded? Okay, so we have to answer all these questions. So the first thing that you need to notice is that along x2 equals minus x1, what is this? If I look at the um, state space, I'm going to draw the state space, right? This is x1, this is x2. Ah, I don't know why that's happening. 
right? This is x1, this is x2. And what is x2 is minus x1? Um, I believe it is something like a line which looks like this. Uh, this is this thing. x2 is minus x1 is this line, right? So this is x2 equal to minus x1. So what happens along this line, along this line, so I cannot of course draw it because it's, uh, I'll have to do it in three dimensions. V takes zero value. Okay, so V equal to zero all along this line. Okay, and that is a problem, right? That is a problem. Right? Why? Because since uh, v not greater than zero for all x one, x two, not equal to zero. In fact, there is a line which can go all the way from zero to infinity and minus infinity, where v is in fact not uh, positive at all. It's in fact exactly zero. Therefore, V is not even satisfying the first two conditions, right? So this is, uh, I you can you can very safely say that not positive definite even. Yeah. So forget radial unboundedness. This function is not even positive definite. Okay. So definitely doesn't work. Next counter example. So I'm sorry, I should have used W, but okay, that's fine. I've used V, but again, let's remember we are using V and W interchangeably and it's the purpose that it serves is what is valuable to us and not the notation. Okay, so let's not get too confused or too hung up with the notation. Okay, all right. So let's look at V, um, well, W, now I will use W, right? Um, X1, X2 is equal to half x1 square plus one fourth x1 four. Okay. Is this positive definite? Is it satisfying? So of course uh, w zero is zero. Great. Okay. But what happens? Let's see. Uh, w of all uh, zero comma alpha is also zero because notice there is no x2 here only one state appears so whenever you have a function which has only one state what happens i can just say w0 alpha is equal to zero which implies w not positive definite and if it's not positive definite implies w not radially unbounded yeah because i i need minimum positive definiteness to even go to radial unboundedness okay so no answer is no again okay so if you have any function which has only uh, some of the states appearing and not all of the states it is immediately not a positive definite function and therefore not radially unbounded okay so you don't even have to do any calculation Okay, because you can always make an argument like I made here. Okay, great. Let's look at a slightly better example. W x1 x2. Well, I, I let me use something better. We have already seen this example. W x. Yeah, where x can be in Rn. So what about this? Does this satisfy the first two conditions? One is, is zero at zero? Yes, W zero is in fact zero. Yeah, what else? W X is in fact positive for all X not equal to zero. It's obvious because if X is not zero, norm X is positive. We already made this argument so so this 
immediately implies norm x is positive and i'm done right if norm x is positive right then this is positive this is again some positive denominator so it doesn't matter so wx is positive so of course it satisfies the first two conditions great yeah excellent we are happy at least we have something that's positive definite right which we already proved had uh, did prove uh, in the previous lecture okay so this is not a different example what about radial unbounded that is what about the third condition does it go to infinity as x goes to infinity as you can see the answer is no right why this is where i, I had written a sort of expression for w last time this is where it will come to be of use to us right so wx can be written as 1 minus 1 over 1 plus norm x squared okay so as x goes to infinity wx goes to 1 right because as x goes to infinity this goes to infinity so this whole thing goes to 0 and so all i'm left with is 1 so this is one of those functions which is a nice positive definite function so so from here i of course had this is positive definite but because of this implies w not radially unbounded rub is the notation for radial unboundedness okay so it's a positive definite function but it is not radially unbounded because it doesn't go to infinity as the state goes to infinity okay so this is rather critical okay rather critical distinction so function like this cannot be used to prove uh, global stability okay all right it will not help us prove global stability properties okay that, that we'll see later on of course but yeah so this is not a radially unbounded function all right excellent so all right so these are sort of the you know the easier condition corresponding to radial unboundedness um, the second condition is um, when we have a function of both state uh, and time right? both time and state appear exactly you know uh, uh, in exact parallel to what we did for positive definiteness we had one condition for when we had a function of the state only and another condition when we had a function of both the state and the time explicitly all right in such cases we just use the previous easier condition right we just again just like positive definiteness we just use the previous condition what do we say it still has to be zero for zero state values and all time okay um and but we say t in r plus here of course so fine that's non-negative time i mean anyway to be honest just to prevent ambiguity it's better to say it is r plus yeah yeah for all definitions of v time in r plus is quite okay okay because we never deal with non-negative with negative time okay so we have vt0 equal to zero is of obviously our standard requirement but the next requirement is simply you know using our previous positive uh, radial unboundedness definition is that this vtx has to dominate a radially unbounded function of the state only okay vtx has to dominate wx which is uh, radial unbound which is a radially unbounded function of the state only uh, where wx is radially unbounded okay so wx is a radially unbounded function of the state only okay in this case of course constructing examples are really easy i can simply take a, a v Uh, v t x as again as something like t plus one by two and norm x squared and we know that this is greater than equal to half norm x squared which is of course radially unbounded 
So this implies that this is radially unbounded. Okay, so it's not very difficult to construct such radial unbounded examples of both uh, state and time. All right, great, great. So what did we look at today? We essentially uh, did the exact same thing that we did for positive definiteness or the case of radial unboundedness, uh, which are functions which addition, in addition to positive definiteness globally, also go to infinity as the state goes to infinity. We looked at some easier conditions to verify this radial unboundedness also. Right? Uh, so again, of course, we will continue with uh, the next set of functions uh, in the upcoming lectures. So that's it. Thank you for joining me.